India is located in southern Asia and is bordered by Pakistan, China, Nepal, Bhutan, and Bangladesh. It is also surrounded by water on three sides. India's natural resources include coal, iron, natural gas, and petroleum. India's climate varies with the wet tropical monsoon season followed by a season of hot, dry climate. The major religion practiced in India is Hinduism, a very diverse religion characterized by a belief in reincarnation. Music and dance have always been an important part of India's history and culture. Today, music and dance continues to be a form of religious inspiration, cultural expression, and entertainment. The marvelous architecture found throughout India is remarkably unique and represents the history, culture, and religious beliefs of the country. Indian architecture has combined the influences of many regions and today remains as some of the most breathtaking works of art in the world. Home to the second largest population in the world after China, the population of India has reached well over a billion people and is growing at a very considerable rate. While India has an amazing history and great cultural diversity, important environmental issues have begun to arise in the country, as they have in all countries around the world. India is predominantly based on fossil fuels and uh, petroleum, which accounts mostly for the vehicular traffic and energy demands of vehicles. And for, as regard for industrial and domestic purposes, electricity is mostly produced by thermal power corporations. And uh, the thermal power is mostly based on coal, natural gas, and uh, oil to some extent. But most, mostly it is uh, coal, and it constitutes to around 70%. Uh, and uh, 60 to 70%, I should say. And uh, 20 to 30% is uh, the share of it is taken by the hydroelectric power. And the remaining 10% is taken by nuclear power and renewable sources of energy. And the most of the renewable sources of energy is uh, wind source. And uh, this part of the renewable sources, wind sources, is being only tapped in the south. Oh, the state of Tamil Nadu, which is frontier in this aspect, but uh, wind energy is not being tapped much in other parts of India. I'm here in Bangalore and have had a chance this afternoon to interview a number of people about their feelings and opinions on uh, the future of energy use and energy generation in India. So let's have a look at some of the diverse opinions uh, expressed by the uh, local people. As far as the energy is concerned, it's got to come from outside. I don't really think, you know, you can't expect this country to actually come have the potential to come up with something that will actually sustain the energy sources, at least for them. Considering the population of the India is huge population, yeah. there is a huge amount of waste that's being disposed of in the huge amount of population. Yeah. That waste can be regenerated uh, and can be used as a biogas. Yeah, alternate energy. Alternate energy source that can be used uh -huh. as a very good fuel. We can do wind energy, we can we have to conserve the energy and we can get it from other countries also, you know. Government has to do it. We have to replace hydrocarbons gradually. The most important is the development of solar energy. Second alternative is the atomic energy. These are the two things that we have to. Other things we may possibly be subsidiary, you see, in the coming years. Yeah. India has gradually developed sources of solar energy in virtually all the government and public sector organizations, guest houses and the departments. We have now the solar energy uh, for heating purposes, but it has not yet come generally to the general people or general community for domestic use. The moment it comes, I think we can save a huge resources which are being drained at present, you see, for importing hydrocarbons. Yes. Nuclear power, mm -hmm. as everybody knows, we have got a very good uh, 
now help and cooperation from United States, France and Russia, all these three countries have assured us that whatever we want in this connection, technology and other things that would be coming to this country and we shall gradually have larger development, greater development of atomic energy in this country. In my point of view, a single source of energy is not a solution for the rising demand. So we have to tap into all the sources of uh, energy which we have. And uh, if you look at into the um, hydroelectric power, India is using only 30% of the potential hydroelectric power it has. And it has huge potential in its northeast where it can develop more hydroelectric power and also on the other river systems where it can uh, additionally develop small, not, not big hydroelectric powers, but small ones. And there is this project of interconnecting rivers and that would also add up, that would also create a potential to create more hydroelectric power plants and add it to the uh, existing power. And, and then we should look forward towards uh, wind energy and since it's, uh, uh, right now wind energy is cost effective unlike solar energy which is not so cost effective but due to the scales of operation wind energy has uh, become more cheaper than it was earlier. I found that there is a great diversity of opinion in India regarding the best solutions for meeting its future energy needs. However, as the population of India passes a billion people, everyone seems to agree that fundamental changes are needed. Most people agree that Hydrocarbons must be replaced with sustainable forms of energy, including wind, solar, biomass, and hydropower. The development of nuclear energy was mentioned by several people, as was the need for energy conservation. As a civilization that dates back many thousands of years, India can be expected to meet its energy challenges with great vigor. At the same time, its population growth makes the energy problem ever more pressing. For all these reasons, other countries can learn some valuable lessons from the Indian experience in energy production and conservation.